The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. Show. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessa. Butch Shepard here with you on this Wednesday morning, the 13th day of February. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup. Also in downtown Jessup, uh, the um, uh, Women's Health Center on Cherry Broad, by the Wolf Animal Hospital on West Cherry Street, and by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. And good morning, Bob. How are you doing? I'm good. All right. We have got um, State Representative Bill Workheiser on the phone this morning, live from Atlanta, Georgia, Wednesdays with Workheiser. Bob, take it away. Bill, how are you doing today? Doing good. Did you get your car fixed? Uh, halfway. <laughs> I talked to Blake Chiller yesterday. He said he was trying to get you to flip days, but you said you had some issues with your automobile, so I just want to make sure you're okay in Atlanta. Yeah, and the problem is you don't have your um, friendly repair people that you're familiar with when you're up here. <laughs> That's for sure. So what do you do? You just ask for references, or what do you do? Yep, ask for a reference and hope for the best. Hope for the best. Hope they don't rip you off, right? Yeah. I think I found a guy. I got so, it. Well, tell us what's happening in Atlanta legislature. Again, it's been awfully quiet. Uh, talked to Stephen Meeks on Monday. He said that just a lot of committees going on, a lot of discussions going on. One question I get from the teachers here, you know, the governor proposed a $3,000 increase in the budget. I know the budget's going to be approved. The, the question they keep asking, when will they see that money in their paycheck? How soon will they see it? Uh, I don't know when because it's got to go through the process, especially if it's um, because we've already voted on the amended budget, which finishes 19, so it would have to go into the 2020 budget. Um, so not till so next year is what you're telling me? Gosh. I mean, that's the question I keep. That's the question I keep getting. You know, everybody's excited. All these teachers want to know when they're going to see the money in their paycheck. So it's not going to be this year. Is what you're telling us? Well, no. Let let me follow up on that because um, even the amended budget was hundred something pages long, um, and you'd think I'd remember that, but I've been so deep in trying to uh, get the public safety portion of it out. Uh, I know we voted on so I, let me find out. Sorry, okay. Sorry, I well, we'll check in with you next Wednesday. You have us that answer. Also, yeah. Stephen Meeks said that, you know, they keep talking about the traffic light here. That's still on the table. I know there's some discussions. Where we stand on that? Well, that's it. Discussions. Um, Stephen is finding out what kind of uh, <laughs> bureaucracy you have to deal with. Uh, and he is reaching out to all the familiar people on, you know, our DOT board, the the, T the DOT planning commission. The, uh, he even met with the commissioner last week. So just still going through the checklist of trying to find someone who will tell us to do it, you know, that, that they'll do it. But, again, it's, it's not because they're not hearing from us. And that's what I don't understand. I mean, they've heard from everybody. I mean, all three representatives have said this is what we want. Everybody knows they want it. Why Why can't it get done? I mean, it seems like a, you know, why is it such well, a headache to get yeah. it done? Well, hey. I mean, it's been so a two, called, three year project. Or I, I understand, and it's, it's, it's dollars. And, you know, their answer to you would be, well, if we did everything that every rep who came to us wanted something in their district, uh, you know, where we're going to have that money. So, I mean, that would be their answer, just because we want it. Uh, and, you know, I told Stephen last week the same thing they told us last year and year before. The study doesn't it doesn't qualify under their guidelines as far as traffic count. And I know the obvious response to that is, uh, well, in Waycross they got one. They have the exact same situation, very similar traffic, uh, and they got one. Yeah, and the same. And Brunswick has one there. Michael and Brunswick has one there at Jane Macon Middle School uh, with uh, I would think 
the same amount of traffic. Um, it's the same highway, Highway 341. Right, you would think so. So that's what I'm saying. When we point out those discrepancies, you know, well, that was done before. You know, we had we had strict guidelines, or you know, they've always got an answer. But all I can tell you is we have not given up. I understand that, but it just seems like the sad answer is, you know, unfortunately someone's got to die before they take action because that seems to be the issue yeah, across but, the state. You know, That's what's sad. That, we said that for years, and last year during session we did have a death there. Now, But it was outside of school time period. Yeah, and because of what happened, it, they said maybe a red light wouldn't have solved that. But we still use that. You know, we wrote a letter that week to the commissioner. We all three signed it, you know, said there's been a death. So, like I said, it's it's the top of our of our mind. Wouldn't that freed up those uh, three county uh, policemen that have to be there every single morning for about an hour and same thing in the afternoon to free Absolutely. them up to do law enforcement work? Absolutely. And from a county and city standpoint, that's a no-brainer. But, but you're asking the state to... So they see that as you're asking to spend state money versus saving the locals. So it's not affecting their budget. Right, right. And, don't, and you, only, you only have to have it on about an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon when well, it's coming on out. That. We, don't, we don't even want you know, it on full time. But then their answer to that is it's the same construction cost whether you turn it on for 10 minutes or 24 hours. Well, that's true. There's no doubt about that. But um, safety first, right? Yeah. So, but uh, I know that you're all still working on that. Um, Bob, what other questions do you have for Bill? we got a guest in the green room this morning. So what other questions do you have for Bill on the state legislature up there? Just to update on the broadband. Like I said, that's the big issue that everybody keeps talking about. You know, a lot of people in this area would like to see that pass. As, like I said, there's a lot of areas in Wayne County where you just can't get service whatsoever. You know, they talked about that yesterday, the state of education out in Kville, things like that. You just, you know, there's dead areas everywhere you go. So. Where, where do we stand on the broadband for South so Georgia? The, it's going to have to be tackled in about three different areas, and the, you would have thought the easiest, but it, it actually ends up being a little bit of a fight. Uh, so last week we voted on um, a portion of the EMC bill that, that freed up regulations to allow them um, to serve, but every time you open up the market, then there's other people who want to make sure that there's fair and equal access and some of the cable folks and landlines who have to pay toll attachments to use the right away, they didn't like the fact that they weren't paying that, but then the response to that was, well, there are polls. We paid to put them there. So then we've got another uh, EMC bill actually on the calendar today to, to vote on as far as uh, service requirements. And then in the Senate side, there's, there's a... Uh, uh, a cell bill. That's not right. Uh, it's it's the small cell bill, and so those those are that's again new technology. Um, anytime you have new te technology, it's not in the code. It's got to be regulated. So they're starting that one in on the Senate side. So there, there's just a lot of different things, but it's certainly been, it's one of the, it'll be one of the highlights of this session to, to allow them, but the problem is if we don't somehow have a pool of money for them to pull from sort of like where they draw down from the federal uh, infrastructure, if you don't do that, then it, it's hard to justify a company just by going down a dirt road to serve three or four houses. Uh, yesterday morning, force, the, go ahead. Well, you can't force a company to say you got to serve these customers because economically, you know, you spend half a million dollars and then charge, you know, four or five houses a hundred dollars a month. You know, that's not fair either. So, so what we really need is an, is improved technology that allows more access without infrastructure, and that's one of the things AT and T did with their, their gig units, and Evans County has one of those. But, again, unless you live within, you know, two to three miles of that particular tower, um, it still didn't help. But it did help a lot of people in Evans County. It, it's, it was a good thing. 
Now, you're talking about something that's um, uh, over the air, not by um, cable, right? Not by line? Correct. Those, those wouldn't be. Right. So you pick um, up that so little they, small antenna and be so able to they, pick it up that way. Yeah, so the AT&T uses uh, almost like a microwave tower, and then you put a unit on the side of your house, and there's literally no infrastructure in between. Right. So you so that, a lot of money. The, yeah, so that's the easiest thing. The, the other new technology is, is using the electricity that's going down your wires. They're not using electricity on the inside of the wire, but on the outside of the wire. Oh. Uh, and so that's as a carrier. And so, but again, that's that's fairly new. And, and again, everybody's got electricity coming to their house, so, so that's another good option. Okay, uh, now I don't know what uh, was meant yesterday, but um, a message that we received, I never received from um, State Senator Blake Tiller yesterday talking about him being uh, tied up with the governor's staff. Uh, he was sorry he couldn't call in, but he did say it's good news for our area. Do you have any idea about what uh, Senator Tillery and the governor's staff was talking about that's good for our area? Do you know what was I going do. on in that meeting? <laughs> I do. But since he's the one that uh, made a point not to tell you, I'm going to let that come Okay, you're going to let that come from uh, Senator <laughs> Tillery, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're a good man there, Bill. I don't want to steal his thunder. So that's right. I don't want to steal Senator's thunder. <laughs> Bob? Uh, that's going to do it. I appreciate you calling in every Wednesday. One, one thing I get this, you know, when you watch the national news, the Democrats and Republicans can gain agree on anything. What's the difference statewide? Don't hear any controversy between the Republicans and Democrats. Everybody seems to get along and everything's moving smoothly. So what's the difference? You really don't, except for a few social issues like, you know, like a gun bill. Um, we really do. We, and I think that's why Georgia is the number one in the country in so many different areas. We, we, of course, we disagree on some stuff, but we we would rather work on the stuff we agree on, not the stuff that we disagree on. And I can tell you, I mean, just like the EMC bill, um, those three or four no votes. I mean, it's we we pretty much work consensus. I mean, this is minor, but it, it's but it's optics. We are, we're one of the few we're one of the few legislatures in the country who don't literally sit across the aisle from each other we're all mixed in well that's good so i mean you get to know your seatmates pretty doggone well right <laughs> so right you friends. so i mean just little things like that okay, okay. Well, again stay safe in, stay safe in atlanta enjoy valentine's day tomorrow don't forget your wife tomorrow i know you're all well, up there so I'm, don't forget I'm valentine's my day wife the ultimate gift i'm giving her a day off for me she's she's down in Atlanta. <laughs> The ultimate <laughs> gift. Keep that in mind. <laughs> a day free away from you, Bill. That's the greatest yeah. Valentine's gift you can give her. <laughs> yeah. Words of wisdom from Bill Warkheiser. We appreciate it, Bill. Stay safe. Thirty-four years of marriage. All right, y'all have a good one. All right, take care, Bill. State Representative uh, Bill Warkheiser called in live from Atlanta there, giving us an update on what's happening in Atlanta. Well, we're going to be talking hogs in just a few minutes. we got some folks here from the Wayne County Tourism Board. They'll be on the air here on the world-famous Butch and Bob Show on WIFO-FM in Jessup in just about a couple of minutes. Good morning, everyone. Our Wednesday forecast begins with a few high clouds. Gradually, we'll get more and more sunshine. Temperatures today will be climbing into the low 60s with clear skies tonight. Tomorrow, sunshine will move into the mid-60s. A few clouds roll in for Thursday night. Friday, cloudy, a few scattered showers on tap. Warmer with a high close to 70 degrees. I'm Georgia meteorologist Laura Huckabee in the GNN Weather Center. When we say right on the corner and right on the price, we mean it at Mike Birch Ford and Blackshear. Up to $12,000 off 2018 F-150s. $12,000 off America's number one selling truck. Stop the search. Call Mike Birch and 24-7 at MikeBirchFord.com. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. 
105.5 FM and just a big dog country radio and WIFO FM. And we continue on with the world famous Butch and Bob show. And Bob, it's time to talk hogs. Hey, we got Mike Deal, Mike Lane, and Heather Altman in here. We got all the information. It's this weekend. The how many years we've been doing hog jam in Wayne County? Forever. Forever. <laughs> Forever. This doesn't have doesn't have a doesn't have a you know new Yeah, this what is it? our ninth annual. Ninth yeah. annual. Okay. Yes. Right. Still Those were the words of Heather Altman. Still got some yeah. nice looking hog. I don't know who the artist is, but they do a good job with um, this. Yes, that was um, back in the day. That was Sharon McCreary's um, artwork, her her graphic design when she owned McCreary Graphics. Um, we've been using this one um, because it's an eye catcher, isn't it? If you put it up in a restaurant or something, somebody's going to stop and look at that for sure. So we um, thank her for that, and we've been using it ever since. But we're excited to be here. We're kicking off our, um, like I said, our ninth annual Wayne County Hog Jam this weekend at J.C. Fairgrounds. It's going to be a Friday, Saturday um, night hunt with a weigh-in on Sunday. But we also had added a special category. Um, I think it was last year we kicked this off with um, a Friday night and a Saturday night big hog. So we hope to have hogs be weighed in every day. So, But the big day will be the Sunday. All right. The hunters come in from all around in any adjoining state they can hunt. The big show is the weigh-in at 2 o'clock on Sunday. A lot of people come out just for that. So... How many hunters do we have participating thus right, far? You know how they they like to procrastinate around around here. So we're, I think we're right now at fifty six is what we had yesterday. Um, you know, by hopefully by Friday night um, we'll be met our max, which we normally are around seventy nine to a hundred hunters. Um, this year we have the two categories, the bow and the rifle, so they have the opportunity to register for either one of those or both of those. Some like to bow hunt, but like to take the rifle with them just in case it's at a distance that they can't kill it with a bow, they can get it with the rifle. So we have those two categories. Um, I'm going to let Mike tell a little bit about the payout, whichever one of them want to do that. All right, let's get around to the police chief, Mike Lane. Go ahead. All right, as Heather was talking about the... Uh Friday and Saturday, this is something we started to try to get hogs coming in for the whole weekend. Uh, Friday and Saturday night for each category, bow and gun, it's $100 to the biggest hog brought in by 10 p.m. I want them to keep that in mind. We're not being, we're not going to stay out there at 1 or 2 o'clock at the scales hope in case somebody brings a hog in. And then on Sunday, we'll be paying out $1,000 to first place, 500 to second, and 250 to third. And we also have... $100 to the biggest hog killed by a, a youth under 16 and $250 to the biggest hog killed by a female. So folks can still enter the uh, hog jam competition. that will be this Friday and Saturday night, correct? Yes, sir. And how much is registration for? It's $50 per hunter, and that's for each category. So if they just want to bow hunt, it's 50 or gun, but they can do both and pay $50 for each category. So $50 a category per hunter. Okay. Yeah, and what no, they have and a youth hunts, youth, youth hunts, hunts free with a registered adult. Youth, and youth is what age? Sixteen and under, or under under sixteen. I'm sorry, under sixteen. Under sixteen. Under 16. And uh, how much is the total purse to be given out? Four thousand dollars, guaranteed payout. All right, sounds pretty good. Sounds real good. And as many hogs are are, are running around the swamps out there. Uh, uh, Mike Deal, as many hogs as are running around the swamps out there, you should be able to come up on some, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the river's up. Of course, it's going down now, but the river's been up, and there's a good many hogs run out on the hill. Uh, we've been uh, trying to get ready for our wounded warrior hunt. Mike and and I and uh, Randy Aspinwall and uh, Alan Volske, Mike Gordon, we all uh, try to take about eight or ten. Of course, we divide it up among other people also. Uh, Pat. Ogden and Suge Blanton's taking a few, and some other guys are, are talking about taking a few right now, but we'll end up with about four or five ourselves, and we've been working on that for months now. Months? Uh, yeah, thanks to uh, Kent Fountain. They gave us a bunch of peanuts that we've been feeding with, and we've got some hogs. It looks like it's going to be fun. We've been, uh, of course, Mike Lang put up some night lights and run them off last night so we're trying to get them back now <laughs> but anyway this is this is uh, really good for those guys yeah you know a lot of people say they look at them when they come in and say these guys don't look like they're wounded but there's a lot of a lot of different issues that they can have to be considered wounded warriors and ptsd is one of them 
Now, and, where can they hunt? Is I know it's Wayne County, but where else other than our county? Well, they they can hunt all of Georgia, all of Georgia, and even the surrounding states. So the adjoining we, states, you know, we don't get any. We really don't get many uh, people from out of state. Yes, yeah, mainly in our we, area, right? Yeah, okay. we get a lot from our area, and we get a lot from West Georgia, and we get a lot from. Uh, North Georgia. We've got a text in here. Now, remember, folks, you can text in questions and comments to our main business line at 912-427-3711, Text in questions and comments. Someone just text in, why did they stop with the dog category in the hog jam? That's a Mike Lane question. <laughs> That's a Mike Lane one, huh? Okay, I'll try to explain this and be politically correct at the same time. we got to be that. These days. We had... Uh, a lot of controversy with our dog teams and the last year that we had the dog category i think we had six or either seven teams was all that we had in her and the complaints range from y'all we we don't want to bring in three hogs because we like to catch our hogs and release them we don't want to have to kill three hogs because we don't want to wipe them out mm -hmm. till well, y'all don't need to allow bar hogs because some people feed them all year long cut them and then feed them all year long and it was just controversy after controversy and we actually met with the dog captains of all the dog teams that last year and we told them we don't make money on this event we do this for y'all so i asked them to get together come up with the rules they wanted in place and we would go that route mm -hmm. and we haven't heard back from any of the dog team captains since so they and, couldn't agree mm -hmm. and we just don't have any yes we would probably have one or two teams that want to participate in it but the participation just went down because they can't there's just a lot of controversy and so teams quit joining so it's not worth us having that category i understand anymore. i understand if, if they'll come up with a plan on on how to make it work and get along and not complain we'd love to do it yeah, you know actually love the dog category ourselves but okay. the uh, the whole emphasis of this tournament is eradication of wild hogs uh, you know, deer hunters know that. If you got a lot of wild hog, they'll they'll push the deer out. Mm -hmm. And wild hog do a lot of <clears throat> damage to the to the farming community. Right. And uh, you know, statewide people are trying to and the state actually is doing a lot of it, uh, trying to eradicate the wild hog or at least you know cut them down to where they can be managed. And and that's kind of what we do this for. And this is hunting at night, is that correct? Uh, morning, it, it, morning, night. It, yeah, it can be any time now. Hog. It can be any time. <laughs> and for the novice out there who's never hunted hogs before, what is the most efficient and uh, best way of hunting hogs? Sour corn. Uh, I mean, do you walk around? No, do you, you sit in a stand? You know, do you? If it was exactly, exactly what I would do, you do I'd get me a nice stand in an area where a lot of hogs are. Mm-hmm. I would uh, keep them fed up real good, really good with either peanuts or corn. I'd take my 6.5 Creedmoor and <laughs> <laughs> take care of them. <laughs> now, let's say you're a person who didn't have that that stand and you've been feeding them for a while. You just wanted to go out there and participate with this. Sit on the ground. Just right? sit on the ground somewhere? Yeah. yeah you just sit on the ground just wait for a hog to come up, huh? Well, and, and a lot uh, of Mike Lane? That, a lot of people that don't have the luxury to have in their own land, they would hunt the WMAs. And down in the river swamp, mm -hmm. when the river's not up, you know, the swamp's more open and they can slip hunt and slip through there. And they can actually follow the hog sign. They'll see where they've been rooting in the swamp and right. they, can, they can stay with it until they come up on a group of hogs. But with the river being up, you can't do that on the hill and the, on the pine thickets and stuff as good as you mm -hmm. can in the river swamp. So, now are hogs kind of scared of uh, and cautious of people? Do they when they see you, do they run? Oh yes, sir. They okay. they go run from you. All right. And we're gonna let Heather real quick. We won't go uh, ahead, Heather. We want to mention our sponsors for our wounded warrior hunt. And I want to mention um, Randy Aspinwall basically helps us work with Fort Stewart and getting these women to warriors. So we want to send a thank you out to him for um, scheduling this, meeting with them, and getting these guys lined up to come into Wayne County on Friday. They'll arrive Friday, and they'll spend the whole weekend with us. And so what we ask is we go out and ask for sponsorships for Wounded Warriors. So we'll bring in 10 to 12 Wounded Warriors, and we try to find a sponsor that will sponsor each Wounded Warrior. And that gives the Wounded Warrior the opportunity to participate in the tournament. We'll have a Wounded Warrior category that's paid out for them especially them um, 
the biggest hog killed by a wounded warrior and things like that. So this helps offset the expense of the weekend for them. So we'd like to send a a big special thank you out to Bennett and Lindsay PC, Harder Recycling, Wayne Memorial Hospital, the City of Jessup, Odom and Scriven, Sheriff John Carter, Code Blue Tackle, Felton Burke Automotive Group, House of Worship Ministry, R&R Auto Sale, Hog and Bones, um, of course, the Department of Natural Resources, Flatwood Kennels, Johnson's Land Clearing, and um, the Jessup Police Department, and Smoke Show. Smoke's so, Show. Yes, huh? it's okay. the new barbecue guys, Puccio and his crew. Um, they, they're they helping us out and cooking for us on the week for the weekends for our Wounded Warriors. So we'll send a shout out to all these guys. We couldn't do this event without any of them. Um, they help make it possible and make the event very special for our Wounded Warriors as they're here to spend the weekend with us. Okay. And um, I also would like to um, say thank you to a host. Um, they don't never like their names mentioned, but they open up their home to these Wounded Warriors every cool. year and um, allow them to stay at their place. Um, they're very special to us, and we thank them. Um, they know who they are. They just don't like their name being mentioned. But um, every year they open up their place to these um, 10 Wounded Warriors, and they have a very good time there. Um, if they're not hunting, they're fishing or they're doing something. So we thank them very much for that. Okay. Mike Lane? Real quick, I just want to say people don't understand. We, we really enjoy this, this Wounded Warrior project we do with this hunt. Uh, like Mr. Dill said, we've put several months ahead of time getting prepared for it but people don't understand what this means to these guys and how i can explain that is pat ogden shug blanton and his crew the flatwood kennels and the johnsons they help but pat ogden and his crew shug and flatwood kennel the group they carried last year has been back to wayne county three or either four times since the hog jam last time and has gone fishing with them and has gone to do different things, just come down to hang out the week for them. They, they've actually built relationship with those soldiers and they come down and hang out with them and they've had a really good time. Mm. So it means a lot to them. They enjoy it. And, and once they come in, we really try to get them. The same ones want to come back the next year. So they, they always looking for that list to come out where they can get signed up and come back and hang out with us Wayne County folks. What is Jonathan doing with graphics on? <laughs> we try not to pay attention that we don't you know, like yeah, to know yeah, that Jonathan, we're being televised. Every so too. often, we'll, um, yeah, we're te- you know we're televised on BigDogCountry.com. Just go to B and B Show, and there it is. So not only you get the hear the audio, you can see the video also. But uh, Jonathan was uh, trying to put the B and B logo on there so people could uh, see what it looked like. All right. So if if people at the last minute here want to participate in the Hog Jam this weekend on Friday and Saturday, how do they go about doing that? Um, they can visit our website at waynetourism.com, and they can go on there and print out the registration forms, fill them out, and complete them and bring them to us. Or there's a link on there to active.com. That will take them straight to the active website where they can the Hog Jam will be pulled up, and they can complete the application and pay online. Or they can just come by the office. We're there Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Okay. The, Friday uh, will depot. be on site or at the office. Right. And that's the depot in downtown Jessup, the train depot there where the Wayne County. the JC Fairgrounds. What's that now? Or the JC Fairgrounds. Or the JC Fairgrounds when we get out there on Friday. All right. All right. Mike Dillon, right. final words this morning? Well, I, I do want to say one thing. At, I know we're running out of time, but <clears throat> some of the things that, that these – Wounded warriors tell us, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quote one of them. Uh, he had had a lot of issues since coming back from Afghanistan, <clears throat> and we were sitting there talking. He said, "I just want to tell you, Mike, that I hadn't slept over one hour at the time since I got back from Afghanistan, and in the last two nights, I've slept all night long." <laughs> now, what's that worth? That's that's, worth that's fantastic. Somebody wants we to know. provide that. Somebody wants to know, how do you sponsor a wounded warrior? Basically, just make contact with us at the Board of Tourism Office. We'd be glad to um, hook you up with a wounded warrior. And, you know, just like Mike and uh, Mike said, you know, some of these guys um, were teams such as Johnson's Land Clearing mm-hmm. and Pat. They were dog teams. And when, you know... They just when we quit with the dog team category, they said, "Hey, you know, we enjoy it. We enjoy participating." So they basically 
put forth to t- host Wounded Warriors. Okay. So, so you, just can, contact, you can, you can contact be a sponsor Board of Tourism. Okay. Your phone with number us. is? 912-427-3233. At our office, you can contact us. and we'll. There's many ways that you can be a sponsor, but a uh, Wounded okay. Warrior sponsor, you can just contact us at our office. Okay. We'll That's be glad to Wayne take County you. County Board of Tourism. Yeah. All right, Mike. Let me add real quick, along with the sponsorship, we're always looking for people that has land that they can that they can sponsor a wounded warrior and take them hunting, have them a stand set up because, you know, sometimes we don't have as many hogs as we did the year before. So we would like to have a variety of places that, you know, some years you may have hogs on your place, some years you may not. But we would like to have some different options. So if anybody has land and they have hogs on their place and would like to participate in this as well, just by furnishing that land and opportunity of, of providing a place for them to hunt, we're always looking for that. Okay. Yeah, we Gibbs. got we got one large piece of land last night. A good friend of mine, the Anderson family, that uh, owns the former formerly known as Hodges Pastor, Jan Anderson, called me last night, and we get places out there we're going to be able to hunt. And of course, that's Mary Ann Anderson and Jim Anderson and uh, Kathy Anderson. So, okay. So we do have that, and that's big, and they're excited about us going out there. All right, hog and jam coming also, this weekend. We have a big piece from Ray in there that we're hunting. Okay, and it's just great that these people, you know, provide this land for y'all to be able to hunt on, uh, especially for the Wounded Warrior uh, program. And folks, if you want to participate, just contact the Wayne County Board of Tourism. Go to waynetourism dot com. Their office is located in the Train Depot in downtown Jessup on Broad Street. Heather, we thank you. All right, anything else? Do it. Yeah, that should do it. What's the next event y'all got coming up, Heather? After the Hog Jam will be the Catfish Tournament, and that's scheduled for June 1st and 2nd, first weekend in June. Um, we're fe- as soon as this is over, we'll be getting information out on that, and we'll be back to see you real soon. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, World Famous Butcher Bob Show, brought to you by Mike Bridge Ford in Blackshear, by Murphy Builder Supply on Northeast Broad Street, Wolf Animal Hospital on West Cherry Street, and by the Women's Health Center in downtown Jessup on Cherry Road. The world famous Butch and Bob Show.